everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Here is all of the yarn that I dyed for the August-September Chemnitz Dye Along livestream, where I was inspired by these beautiful pops of color of this rock under a black light, looking at the fluorescence there. So of course, I had to play with fluorescence in our yarn. And we'll be looking at this more, but let's just turn on a black light. And look at the glow! Look at the glow! Oh my gosh, I am so excited to take a closer look at these, especially our speckled colorway, because I think I tried to bring in the light, black light in the live stream, and well, let's take a closer look. That Yak is a yarn base from Wool to Die For that is 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, and 10% nylon. The yarn base starts as sort of this warm gray, cool brown kind of color, oatmeal-y, and I really love playing with it for many applications, but I thought it would be especially fun given that we have this rock that's fluorescent. And I don't think I have a picture of the exact rock that's our inspiration photo without a black light to see what it looks like just under normal white light. But I imagine that you do see some colors in there. And then when you turn on the black light, all of a sudden you see all of the pops of the fluorescence. Now, there isn't a good blue fluorescent dye at my disposal. And black lights tend to lean a little bit blue. And I think here you don't really see the pops of blue very much at all. But really there isn't much I could have done with that. Uh, but I'm very happy that we have a lot of the green and orange and that we didn't blend the two together very much. I do have a video where I did mix fluorescent safety orange with radioactive and you get beautiful fall tones in those intermediate colors. But I really wanted to preserve some of the brightness for this colorway. And I think we achieved that. I know not many people have black lights anymore, so opportunities to look at garments uh, that are fluorescent under a black light may not come up that often, but I don't know. It's still something super, super fun about this type of colorway. I'm very excited to have played with the neon orange and neon green in a way, plus, plus black actually, plus black, in a way that doesn't immediately feel Halloween. Uh, and so for that, I'm very, very excited. And that's why I like doing these dialogue inspirations because it gets me outside of my color comfort zone. Or at least I try to pick inspiration photos that'll get me outside of my comfort zone. Here is another colorway I dyed inspired with the exact same palette. And I don't do a lot of more repeating variegated colorways, but I adore the way this one turned out. I'm not sure if part of it is that Wool to Die For's Platinum Hanks are a little bit longer than, say, Nitpick's Stroll Hanks. Both yarns are 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and their yardage is nearly identical. I think one is 461 yards per 100 grams, and the other is 462 yards per 100 grams. Uh, but yeah, maybe it was also just the technique I did in this stream, but I loved the way that I did this pattern, the way I have chunky black speckles at the interface of some of these color transitions. And while there was some blending between the green and the orange as I flipped and added more color, and we didn't end up with anything that remotely felt like mud. Should I dye variegated yarn like this more often? Uh, here with the black light, you can still see the blue a little bit just because of the way it is a little bit thicker and we still have some white light coming through the window. But clearly the glow of the orange and green is really showing through. The fluorescent yellow pigment uh, is very, very bright, much brighter than the fluorescent pink acid dye. And so that's why both the green and the orange show up so beautifully. I think when I dye variegated yarn, I tend to go for things that are more random, organic, less repeating because when I'm knitting, if things are gonna pool, then I, I start to think a lot about like, is this color gonna hit where this color was last time? And I don't know, it sort of enters my brain in a way. So therefore I definitely try to dye non-repeating colorways a lot, 
But this was so fun and satisfying that I wonder if this is something I need to do more often. In our yarn mop, which is another skein of Wool to Dye Force Platinum, the colors blended together a little bit more and so the overall colors feel a little bit more muddy, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just the colors are more muted. However, when we pop on the black light, you can see the brightness in there again. And actually, this one feels a lot like the inspiration photo to me. Maybe we could have some more orange in there, but I'm really seeing the blues. And yeah, I guess something feeling not bright. Like I'm assuming the rock doesn't feel bright without the black light on and then really glowing when exposed to the black light. Ugh, so much fun. Finally, we have our self-striping colorway. I'm gonna open up from the way I have it protected in a moment. I actually have a clip of it as it was dyed to show you. For the self-striping colorway, I arranged the yarn as follows. We've got black next to green, then orange. It goes back to the green, back to the orange, then to black, blue, and then through some sections that are smaller of the color. My hope, as we let some of the black bleed into the orange and some orange into green, my hope is that we will end up with something that feels really organic once we knit it up. Now I have the yarn laid out so you can actually see those color repeats that we have, where we've got orange, green, orange, green, black, a tiny bit of our green and orange, and then a little bit of some mottled blue before a big section of black. And so, the way that this would knit up really is gonna depend on the number of stitches, whether it's back and forth or in the round, but I do plan to knit a swatch of this to share how in one circumstance it would work up. But first, I'm gonna to have to go and wind this into a more manageable skein size. But my goal here with how it was dyed was for the color sections to not be perfect. We have some blending of the colors in some sections, a little bit more black in some spots, a little bit of more orange there, because I wanted, even though we had longer sections and a little more stripey feel, I still wanted to feel some of the organicness of the rock. And that's why I didn't try to separate the different color sections to prevent bleeding within the pan. And I think that the result is going to be really awesome. But now I will be back in I guess a couple of days because I'm gonna go wind this off camera. I will be setting the skein probably between two chairs, walking back and forth as I wind it, and then I'll knit up a swatch, which I'll be showing you here. Here is a swatch I knit of our self-striping yarn using size one 2.5 millimeter knitting needle. And you can see that we have larger sections of black that has a little bit of hints of green and orange uh, and blue, and then a section that is more orange and green repeating. And the way that this works up is very organic. It is stripey, but the stripes are variegated and I think it fits our rock inspiration really nicely. But of course, we have to look at it with the black light. Uh-huh, there we go. Oh, that's so fun. I bet this is feeling like the rock to me. I'm excited, I love the way that the blue pops a little bit, even though that is not fluorescent. Uh, but yeah, this is our rock, plus the skein. And so one more time, we can watch it glow. The whole yarn has this fun fluorescent quality to it. But one thing I think it's really important to point out is that looking at this yarn, it looks like a kind of colorway that was reskeined. You can't really tell looking at it that the sections of orange and green are really, really large. You just know that they are frequent. And so I think that this is why I always try to provide some kind of swatch with self-striping yarn, not just so that way you know how long the sections are and know that it's self-striping, but that way you can know, oh, okay, if I want to create something like this, but I want the stripe sections to be bigger on a sock, I might need to make a long skein of yarn that's twice as big as these five meter long hanks that are commercially available from Wool to Die For. And for reference, the swatch was knit on size one 2.5 millimeter knitting needles with 30 stitches in stockinette. So if you were gonna do a sock with say 60 stitches around using the same size needles, 
each of these striped sections would be much thinner. So if you wanted a sock to look like this, which by the way would be really, really cool, you would want to dye this kind of yarn using a much longer skein with longer sections overall. And so here is all of the yarn that I dyed inspired by this really cool rock specimen. I am so happy, inspired, and excited by these colorways. Uh, not just the colors and the palettes, I really, really like that, but some of the overall, I guess, techniques on the particular yarn bases I'm very, very happy about and would love to try again in the future. Is there one of these that you would like me to do sooner rather than later in a standalone episode of Dye Pot Weekly? Please let me know in the comments below. But now let's take a look at some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo. This is my favorite part of the Chemnitz dye along process because different people will interpret a photo differently and play around with different colors and proportions and techniques and it's very fun to see. If you would like to be featured in a future Chemnitz Dye Along recap, just share the yarn or fiber that you dyed using the inspiration photo on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dye Along or reply to the inspiration photo on the public Chemnitz Facebook page with a photo comment. And I'll pull as many as I can to incorporate into the recap video. And while it's very important that you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any fun Chemnitz content, you can also join the channel to become a channel member and get access to member badges and fun custom emotes. Uh, you can find more details by clicking on the join button that should be located near the subscribe button down below this video. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.